forest elves had finally been convinced that Foster Logger had been reincarnated against all odds, proving that he was a more frightening threat than the world first deemed. Okay, next time, next time we beat him and then we lock the doors on the tombs. And and hide, hide, uh, hide the things, not display them as though they were... All right, so Unforgiving Swamps will find us the other general. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that's remotely interesting, and the answer is no. Alright. Random encounter! Let's fight him. Yep, let's kill him. Let's kill them real good. Alright, level 9, lizard men's. Lizard men. Oh, we should probably go to camp. Oh, we should. We should. Alright, so we we go to camp after this. Yeah, we kill some lizard men. Yeah, alright. I'm gonna put some shots into these lizard wizards. Whoa, oh, shit! shit. <laughs> We've got a res. Yeah, we do. Do we have a do we have res potions? Because I think we do. Yes, resurrects a, a knocked out character and okay, yeah. over twenty percent. So let's res. Well, actually, I have a better idea. Let's let's figure out what we need to kill these guys. Fire. Weak against fire. Res, res Draco. Draco. All right. Yeah, Draco goes before the Lizard Wizards. Um, yeah, do we want to buff us? Yeah, let's get some shield wall. Yeah, in case those Lizard Wizards can do terrible things to our front row. Um, and then he, he just goes again, so... Yeah, do you want to... What happens if we scare them? I'm curious. Oh, let's find out. That it gets the whole row, right? Uh, yeah, so any part of his chance in... So yeah, they're all afraid. Defense value is reduced. Oh, okay, yeah, nice. that's, that's, that's pretty good. Nice, uh, Loren. Oh, the wizard. The uh, oh yeah. Uh, Draco's gonna die again. Is he? Oh yeah, wizard A. Yeah. We could use a heal potion on him. Uh, sure. Except. Like, cause they didn't one shot him. It took two. Okay. Wizards to so take yeah, him yeah. Let's heal him up. Um. Fifty. Hundred. There we go. Uh oh, we could have just had Saren heal him. Yeah. Uh, Saren can res somebody else. Yes, though. he can. Twenty-five percent. Yep. No, let's see what we can do here. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Right back down. Um, and we Kiki. Yeah. Just let's just keep wailing on him. Uh, oh, the run's super low too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Focus fire. I think. Okay, Draco. All right, Draco, do your do do what you do. You can't kill them all. Um, you can't kill either of them. Saren will get one of them. Mm-hmm. And that's a good start. But yeah, I think we take the sure thing. Yeah. <gasps> Who's paralyzed? Saren? Yep. Uh, this one's burning, so he'll die in two turns regardless. Right, yeah, no, our whole front row is paralyzed. Oh shit, you're right. All he can do is defend or potion? What, what can you do when you paralyzed? Can, I can potion other people. Oh, nice. Thank you. Um, Love Louise Lizardmen. Nine. They're the same level as us. Oh, they're level 10. I am 10. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. No. You know, it's just they, they got the drop on us, and the, the AO, AO, like, shockingly, AoEs are really effective in this game. Yeah. Um, I think we want to... So if we... The wizard's down here, but all these people are paralyzed, which I think means and they Lor Yeah, Loren is a hit away from death, I think. Yeah, so why don't we get her to potion herself? Yeah, that should be fine. That'll keep her up. Yeah, good good call. Yeah, they don't do a whole ton of damage, but the shield wall is going to run out soon, too. Let's just potion up our... Uh... Oh, I'm not paralyzed anymore. Who's the next lizard wizard? B? Oh, fuck. Why do I do such shitty damage? You can't kill him? 
Nope. Nope, we can't kill him. So there's no point. Um... We might as well just heal. Oh, uh, no, there's a point in killing, hitting him. Oh, it's true. It's true. He'll die on his next turn. Yeah. If we if we shoot him, Where the is fire lizard? will kill. Oh, him. Lizard Wizard A actually goes yeah like, super next. No, no hard shot. I think. Yeah, I think we need the the hard shot. And miss. Yep, and we missed. Yeah, we missed. That's great. Um, Ren wanna heal herself or make us angry? I think she needs to heal. Yep. Because next up is Wizards and Warriors, and she's not going to survive. Alright, so we're going to get him to shield walls again. Uh, yep. Yeah, because yeah, now this they're... This is a real fight. Now they're burning out our front row. Alright. Slow everybody. Slow everybody. And kill those wizards. What? What? Oh, the wizards, they they guarded the wizards. They're guarded. Oh, that sucks. We're dead. Like, because we can't burn out this front row fast enough. We can kill, but we can kill the ones that are guarding the wizards. Alright. Yeah, that'll kill, yeah, that'll kill the two front row guys. Which means those wizards won't be guarded anymore. And also, yeah. And it did it in the right order. Hooray. Yeah. We win! What do you mean we can't win? Jesus. That was, that was rough. That was that was a thing. Swamps are full of dangerous animals and lizard men, but precious gems can also be found. Great. You can do some hunting in the swamps. If you move in a big group, you have less chance of finding anything, but it will be safer. If you hunt in smaller groups, your chances will increase, but the encounters will be harder. We want to go back to camp. Yeah. Been a rough day on the mall. Most of them just wanted to sit by the campfire for a hot meal and then go to sleep. Saren included. However, their food had run completely out the day before, and they were too busy with their tasks to gather more. That's a terrible idea. Yeah. We have like nine people. Loren called over Saren. Arrange for a gathering party, or off the weak willed of us will apparently starve. I'm so hungry. It's only been one day. Listen, let me tell you about second breakfast. I will begin a hunt immediately. I should be able to catch some rabbits in the woods. I saw some when we passed by earlier. That will not feed us. If you eat rat nothing but rabbits, you will die. Uh, yeah, th that's like on an ongoing basis. Evan. They both looked at Mukiki as he made himself part of the conversation. Saren was less welcoming, as usual. And what would you suggest? We eat one of the elves. <laughs> Have you we seen make them, them? There's we, no meat on those bones. We make them draw straws. There are fish in the lake. How would we even catch the fish? With magic. I don't understand. The way you always catch fish. With a spear. That was unfortunately something that Saren hadn't been taught, nor even seen, thanks to his days in the Citadel. Like, I will send some... I'm amazed he knows how to hunt. He was just like, I will send someone to the corner store. Rabbits are still a much better idea. They're tastier and require less work to catch. And besides, what? And besides, I don't think everyone else knows how to fish anyway. Spoken like someone who has um, had some frustrating fishing trips and has never tried to catch rabbits. <laughs> yeah. Trap lines are hard. Then stay behind. I will catch enough fish by myself. Whatever you get, get as much as you can. I don't want us to be in this situation again. Sarah and Amukiki were like glaring at each other when Loren gave up on them. Now kiss. <laughs> Amukiki's inherent competitiveness, combined with Saren's possessiveness of his mistress, triggered a war in their minds. They took separate routes to the same waterside location, but they met there just the same. Saren had only finished collecting materials to build the rabbit traps. Amukiki, on the other hand, was wading in the lake and had already started collecting a pile of fish on the shore. The gladiator only briefly acknowledged his presence before striking at the water and retrieving a fish impaled on the spear. Saren's jaw clenched. This was not going the way he wanted. But all he could do now was focus on making traps as fast as he could. And while he did, he knew that working too quickly would result in poor quality traps. And even if he were done soon, he'd have to wait too long for the rabbits to trigger them. So he weighed his option. Continue with his plan or find another, better food source. There was no doubt in his mind that it was the latter. 
He evaluated his surroundings, and Emukiki retrieved even more fish at the end of his spear. Fishing was off the plate. Fruits and vegetables would never compare to meat. Meat. Saren could hunt big game. But what? He never wished for a bear so much as he did right now. <laughs> Saren noticed something gliding in the water. A crocodile. It wasn't a bear, but it would do. He decided not to announce it, announce it because it was Saren's to kill. When did Saren become so competitive? Good grief. He would have to be quick because if it reached anywhere near Emukiki, the brute would surely kill it himself. It dawned on him that Emukiki would have to kill it because it would attack him. A crocodile was swimming right for him. Saren was already near the water's edge at that point, but he dove on top of the beast without thinking further. The crocodile writhed underneath him, but he managed to clamp its mouth shut. Saren had trouble in both finding and wielding his dagger, and was only able to stab the crocodile once before it spun underneath him. His knife slipped out of his hand and into the water. His heart almost stopped the moment he saw the beast thrash toward him with its wide-open mouth. But then the crocodile was completely out of sight, smashed into the water by a spear straight into its skull. Amukiki grunted as he ripped the beast from the water and tossed it on the shore. It flopped down lifelessly. He turned to Saren, still sunken in the lake. You picked too big a fight. I could have handled him. Amukiki said nothing and walked back on a dry land. He rolled the crocodile over and heaved it onto his shoulders. But that was his kill. Wait! The crocodile can't even... <laughs> Amukiki almost smirked as he started to walk back to the camp. Saren stumbled out of the lake in protest. You hear me? You can carry the fish. His jaw dropped. The man had really just stolen his prize and was abandoning the fish to him. Saren had no choice but to gather the fish and haul them back, running after Amukiki. You didn't give me a chance. I think it's only fair to say that I killed it. What, why? Why would we do that? Kiki ignored him. Back at camp, Draco was wilting by the fire, moaning and groaning. Dwarves need twice as much food, and you don't see me whining. Dora's stomach rumbled. You didn't hear that. Well, they're back. Well, it's about goddamn time. Draco shot up with anticipation, almost knocking Dora over. They both cheered, seeing Amukiki lugging in a large beast on his shoulders. Oh, how'd you get that? Never mind. I don't care. How do we cook it? I mean, I only really have one setting. <laughs> Saren grumbled, since he rightfully couldn't claim that they had anything they had brought that they brought back to eat, so he prepared the food in silence. A mighty kill. It is Amazon tradition to give the best cut to its slayer. Ren passed the first choice of meat from the crocodile around the, the circle they had formed. It passed from her mother's hands, teased Draco, Dora, and eventually ended up in Amukiki's hands. Saren burned with jealousy, right up until Amukiki passed the plate to him. He stared at him, offering it for a moment, unable to believe it. Take it. He hesitated no longer and grabbed his reward, and realized that he hadn't actually killed the beast to deserve it. Even though Loren gave him an approving nod across the campfire, he became more focused on Amukiki for, for the night. Even if he didn't want to admit it, his views on him had changed for the better. Amukiki affection point. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. 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 That was a thing that just happened. Uh, it was definitely a thing that just happened. All right. So last time we went left or right, so why don't we go right to left? All right. Sure. I bet you've got nothing to say. Yep. Oh, he does? No. Oh, no. This yeah. Is, yeah. This is his go away line. Yeah. All right. Go away. Sarah caught Mesfa glaring intensely at Mirth and her brother from across the camp. Oh, nope, yeah. You're not thinking of hurting them, are you? The dark elf snarled and looked away. They're my enemies. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. That assassin spent years trying to kill me. He'll probably spend a few more. He won't do that. I think you're just being contrary. He literally shot at me. I'm not being contrary. He put a bomb in my nursery. He did not put a bomb in your nursery. He's... Your words mean nothing to me. My words mean everything to you. <laughs> your empire lords speak lies to elves as easily as they drink water. The empire speaks nothing but truth and elves don't drink water. <laughs> you're 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 their king.
kid. Romance. Some would say the same about the Dark Elves. You are kin to your ancestors. Should you still be judged by them? Hot. Yeah. <laughs> Only if my ancestors allowed me such a place in this world, that yours have allowed you. That was a sentence I just said. I, I think I've... I, I had trouble parsing it, but I think that I know what you're saying. Your anger is too much. Yeah. I'm overcome. No, it's too little. I had just have the little tiny anger. I was at the anger store, and they asked me to supersize it. And I wanted to, but I didn't have the 47 cents. I just didn't have it. He growled again. Conversation was boiling his demon blood. Your anger will be your unmaking. Then I welcome my unmaking. Come on. Come on. The dark elf's eyes began to glow brightly and his hands were tight fists. Then you care nothing for your people. Romantic. I am so... I'm as romantic as I am I funny. crave their liberation. And a shirt. From the demons? From. Not the elves. From the demons that are possessing you, controlling all of us. They're the ones bringing our world to an end. You elves have to deny us. No, it's not fair. Because of your people's history with demons, am I right? I'm really trying to make this flirty and romantic. Right? I'm having trouble. The glow from Mesfit's eyes dimmed. I am one of them. So, no, you're a survivor. I get it. You disagree with everything I say. Stop repeating me. I'm not repeating you. It's... <laughs> God damn it. Fight the call inside you and you fight them. And if you fight with us, you'll destroy them all. Easy for you to say. You don't, you don't share the same blood. You're right. It is easy for me. How can I make it easier for you? There we go. I There's could, a line. I could take a back rub. Or like, like a hoagie. Or a cheeseburger. Would you go for like a crocodile cheeseburger? Really, as long as it's got cheese. I'm not super picky. Or you could kill me. Jesus. Be besides that. Don't not kill me. I learned your little game. Let me go. No, no, look. Besides that as well. And look, you can leave any time. You demonstrated that earlier. That you can't help me. Ah, I'd like to think that I can. So I will keep trying. Please develop an understanding of affirmative consent. <laughs> and go away. I haven't had a lot of role models. Saren's <laughs> eyes bore into Mesfit so intensely that the Dark Elf had to take a step back. Any trace of anger in him had vanished. Why? I do like the, like, no, look at his confused look. Like, what the fuck? That stance. <laughs> Who? Okay, boy. He continued to stare back in bewilderment before Saren left on his own. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they get, just get in those hearts. Yeah. Mesfit's mouth pressed into a thin line. It would take more time for Mesfit's anger at the world to ebb away. Well, that was a thing that just happened to yep. both of us. Yeah. Ray. Oh, he's actually doing something. Oh. Ray sat by the campfire with one of his arms completely bare. He took several red flowers and began crushing them into a bowl next to him. It intrigued Scarin, so he crept closer to spy on what he was doing. Oh, spy what he was doing. Yeah. That makes much more sense. Um, I vote he's giving himself a stick poke tattoo. Uh, clearly Elven uh, healing balm. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping stick poke have tattoos. Crushed flowers made a dye, which Ray dipped his fingers in and began drawing a line starting from his wrist and straight up to his shoulder. It looked cosmetic, but he'd never seen him do it before. After a few final touches, Ray disposed of the dye and recovered his arm. Or recovered his arm. Sarah couldn't help himself anymore, and he had to ask. I'm sorry, but what were you just doing? As always... Oh, that's wrong voice. As always, we'll need my aim perfectly straight tomorrow. 
gestured the act of firing a crossbow, but his explanation had explained nothing. Um, what? I, I use it as a sight. I aim okay. down my arm. Yeah. <laughs> my arm was twisted today. Saren blinked. It needs a speedy recovery. The more Ray acted like Saren should have understood him, the more he wished he did. Oh, that's right. You're a human. And you know nothing of the great elven culture. So good. That line you drew was an elven thing? Everything I do is an <laughs> elven thing, you fucking moron! Stole my fucking line. <laughs> it's a mark. It's been used as... It, it has been a part of the elven culture since the beginning of time. This symbol that I've drawn is meant to guide the healing spirits to my arm. At least hopefully. They usually appease me. I think I understand. You take that red flower, make it die, and draw on your body where it hurts. You definitely understand all of the pieces without understanding any of the significance, yes. It's like, no, 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 I totally get it. You're, you, uh, you, you take communion. Yes and no. It's Markers can be one. anything. It's a whole other language. Wow. Seems like there's a lot I don't know about elven culture. Uh, yeah, seems so. He'll definitely get far with Mirth knowing nothing about the world she lives in. Mmm. That was unacceptable. Will you teach me? No. Ray was hesitant. I will. But because people like you need to be educated, not because he had demanded it. That's a really good sentence. Yeah. Alright. Fair enough. All right. I mean, to be fair, like... Saren really does need a little bit of, like, charitable support. He's... hasn't had a lot of exposure. It's true. Speaking of exposure... I finally understand. Get, uh, understand what? Why well, you enjoy being Lorraine's little slave. Also because it is compulsory and she will kill you if you leave. You love her. Yeah. In, in that way that dogs love people. Hmm. Excuse me, I'm I'm not. I don't see girls that way. What? Oh, well, I guess that's important to know. That's that's in, there's a lot going on there. Kamara grinned at how easily she disturbed Saren. Is Saren uh, ace? I mean, he we haven't have been, no we understanding. We haven't been playing of, him that way. That's for sure. No, but like he also doesn't really seem to have a meaningful understanding of like romantic entanglements. It doesn't make him ace, though. But um, he also, like, like, the, like, all of the acts of physical affection seem to just be foreign to him. I like to think that and Saren could... is a space alien operating a body. True. Um, as soon as you parse it out like that, you're like, no, this makes a lot of sense. Mm. <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> Why would you not care if you had any freedom? Because you're exactly where you want to be, under Lorraine's big Amazon thumb. Have you seen her hands? They're huge. I'm happy to serve the princess. It's a great honor. We have some internalized shit. The princess is a weak spot for you. That is why you are still alive, she's not killed you like so many other people. Swoon? Weak spot? Ah, your mind is <laughs> stop. Listen, reboot your brain. And let me spill it out. She wants you as your, her plaything. And you basically are, and you like that, so you stay. Because, I mean, you could leave at any time, and you didn't. Saren recalled all the times when Loran had protected him or gave him an unusual look. She was so cold at first, but now, did she really love... No. No. Not... In, in again, the way that people, people love, love dogs. dogs. <laughs> he shook his head. Processing. Please wait. Ah, I'm still just as interested as I am to know if underneath the cold exterior lies something very, very... hot. Go. I don't know. Loren is probably very weak when it comes to relationships. It's a weird thing to say. Uh, is your duty a servant to teach her, yes? Saren immediately blushed just thinking about what Kambara was implying. Kambara smirked with satisfaction. 
ran her fingers across Saren's shoulder blades as she rounded him to leave. Getting that three hearts. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, Mirth. Mirth. You're a druid. Well, no shit! <laughs> this is, I'm imagining this happening in a pub. They can slide on it. So, you're a druid. I'm sorry, but what exactly is a druid? Oh, uh, we're like four sprites, even if that's not entirely true. I'm not particularly sure of the best to describe it. I'm not a sprite like the nymphs. I'm also born different from humans and elves. I feel as if I'm one with the forest. As if I am the forest. Like I'm a voice. That term druid has been applied to anybody who studies incapable forest magic. It's what my lineage is called. It's common to think of me as a magical creature born from a flower. But druids are similar to both humans and elves. I was born from my mother's womb. It's like not a giant flower like a nymph. With all of our expert training. Yeah, for no, hundred percent. We're just on we're on board. So druid doesn't take <laughs> non druid mates. Yeah, I am just sidling up to you in a pub. I especially like the term mates. Mm, yeah. Ah I got a few mates back home. Hey. <laughs> Mirth's cheeks begin to redden. Oh, I'm not sure. I really do. I don't mean it's just to judge that sort of habit. I do know that I didn't have a father, and neither did my mother. Do it's just become. I could make you become. <laughs> Thank you. You'll be, you'll be becoming. You'll be, yeah, you'll be coming all night, my friend. Oh, whatever the forest deems. That sounds frightening, but that's a blessing. You seem to exist as if on an entirely different plane. I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying get on my level. Okay. I'm not that different from you. I breed, I cry, I laugh, I love, I laugh at you, I laugh at Draco, I laugh at, I laugh at everyone, really. She choked on that last word and looked away somberly. Then I think we're exactly alike. I've got a leaf bra! Mirth looked back up at him and smiled softly, a glimmer in her eye. Die! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Karen, Karen doesn't want to talk to us ever again in our whole lives. Oh, thank God. Uh, Ramus. Ramus. Nope. Nope. Um, Amukiki. Amukiki. You were deliberately undermining me. Amukiki went rigid in defensiveness, but said nothing. You know I'm right. You're overreacting. I've done nothing but try to serve the princess. You put her in danger. When was this? No, I saved her from it. You were wrong, and you should admit it. No, I was not. It didn't matter what I said. You just wanted to be disagreeable. I saw your conversation with Mesfit. This is not a very big camp. This is meaningless. Blind? You're already set in what you want to believe. You haven't appreciated my presence from the beginning. That much is clear. No, you're right. I haven't tolerated you, but you've been... You've been... that You've proven to be actually intolerable. And when Kiki's eyes glanced down and saw Saren had his hand on his weapon... Uh, whoa, bear. What now? Are you going to hit me? I would make you hit yourself. And then we would wonder why you were hitting yourself. I would ask you to stop. I would ask you to stop hitting yourself. But you wouldn't, because I would continue making you hit yourself. Do we fight? Because, again, go. we'll go back to the bit where you're hitting yourself. No! Don't fight! God! Why would we fight this guy? This you guy would, would tear our arms off and beat us to death with them. <laughs> While yelling, stop hitting yourself. Stop it. Stop hitting yourself. Everyone look, he's just hitting himself. <laughs> stole our head while we swing. His hair and swallowed and eventually dropped his hand from his blade. I wonder if that's going to cost us romance points in the end. What, like not fighting him? Yeah. We do not have to be enemies, but I will not stand for what you did. 
Oh, she asked for my advice, not yours. God, that bullshit. You're paranoid that I'm not working in her best interest. You still think I mean to kill her and take the sword? No, I just think you're being disagreeable and I'm sick of it. Advise me how to avoid offending you in the future. That is all that I'm guilty of. Well, I plan to. <laughs> that was so <clears throat> awkward. That, that caused me physical pain to experience. All right. Draco. Oh, that makes me sad. Um, we'll go up on the show. Yeah. What is your relationship with Emu Kiki? Will you wingman me on Emu Kiki? <laughs> it's not a close one. He is well known amongst most people of the Empire. <clears throat> However, he and I brokered a deal regarding the Ember Blade. However, as you may now realize, the arrangement has not gone quite according to plan. He is not the sword bearer. I was not expecting him to continue his allegiance to the sword after it rejecting him. That is his own doing. His combat record is unmatched, so he is a valuable ally, and the princess should be flattered to receive such an oath. Sir chewed his lip. Seemed to be the only person who wished Amukiki had stayed in Grimoire. Yeah, because yeah. Amukiki has been consistently awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You're being a dick. He's, he's a grown-up. Like, he's just... He's not even, like, being... like he, I mean, he's rad, but he's, like, he's just being a grown-up about shit. Yeah, like... He's, he's like, like, I'm well-adjusted. What's I, your... I'm well-adjusted. Oh, What's I see a need. Uh, let me do that. Yeah. Uh, I see a point, pa- a point where my expertise is of value. Let me deal with that. Oh, hi again. So that's it. All, All right. right. Uh, uh, yeah, why don't we take a quick break? Uh, we're going to talk to Loren. Oh, shit. I had almost forgotten. Oh, oh shit. Now now we're back in the... All right. The war had taken a heavy toll on Mirth, and Saren couldn't tell. She spent a lot of time alone, and her conversations were shorter. More than that, her smiles were becoming more rare, and her eyes dulled. It hurt Saren to see her like that. He wanted to do something for her. To show her that she, he was there if she ever needed comfort. While walking through the trees to find her, he came across a beautiful flower. It instantly reminded him of her. He's going to pick the fucking flower, isn't he? 100% he is, in a soft incandescence. So it glowed in the darkness of the canopy. He picked the flower to give to her. You've paid no attention to anything. Yeah, got, yeah. No. It seemed incredibly <clears throat> natural to him to want to give this gift to her. She deserved it after so much, and he knew that she appreciated nature's beauty as much as, she, as he did, which is why he should have gone to her and been like, hey, I saw this really pretty flower. Let's go for a happy walk. Yeah. How far away can you be? Saren found Mirth by the lake. She was alone and reflecting on the situation, almost meditating. Her eyes opened when she heard him walk out. It's like, I can feel the forest! What's that flower you got there? Ah, Neem! Ah, hello! I brought you something. A gift. He pulled out the flower from behind his back and held it out to her. He didn't think he would be so nervous. It certainly wasn't an, all, an issue at all back when he found the flower and decided to give it to her. But now... Now it is like... reaction... Cr- can... Right? Like, why would you think this is a good idea? <clears throat> oh, uh, The yeah. corners of her mouth deepened into a frown upon seeing his gift. That's a very rare species of plant... He has tore it away from its wee home! Ah! Uh, I should never pick flowers, you find! Yeah! Bloody monster! Saren's voice got stuck in his throat. <coughs> Mirth looked remorseful, <clears throat> whistling she could have appreciated his gift. Ah, sorry! I know you mean well, but I mean, it's, it's beautiful! It's one of my favorites! But it's bloody well dead now! Such an idiot. Hey! Oh, thank God. That... Oh, I can fix it. Ah, oh, please give it here. She asked for the flower and then Sarah tentatively handed it to her. She had it. She scanned the area for a new home for it. How are you plant it? Everything will be fine. Let's fix all your shit like I'm your mother. She got down on the ground and stood the flower up on its stem in the dirt. She closed her eyes and conducted her druid magic. <laughs> it explains the music. <laughs> the plant began to grow new roots that dug into the soil. She removed her hand after it was done. The flower stood up on its own. Ah! There! That's all fine! 
His guilt was only mildly relieved. Instead of giving her a gift, he gave her another problem to fix. Say that out loud! Yeah. <laughs> ah, Sheeran! She reached up and grabbed his hand. He looked down at her with pained eyes. Mirth tugged his hand to get him to sit next to her, and he did. They sat in silence for a moment. Ah, Suri! I don't think I could feel any more foolish. It was pretty obviously... Ah, no, no! I don't I, I care about the gift! I care about the thought! It really is ridiculous how every time I try to impress you, I completely screw up. It's a wonder you even put up with me. Boy, you got abs for days. <laughs> Mirth grabbed his arm and squeezed. He looked over and saw her eyes were full of conviction. A slick a cheese grater! <laughs> I never expected to be impressed, but I am. I've never met a human like you before. Or an elf for that matter. It's like a cheese grater! <laughs> Do my laundry on you! I bet it's just Julian Fries! You're a like a bloody cheese grater! <laughs> yeah, yes. I don't. I, I can't say it out loud. I, like. I that can't. seems impolite! <laughs> elves don't have abs. None of the elves. Actually, that's not true. That's not true. Dark elves have abs. Yeah, when we don't. Because Mesfit and his dad both have abs. Yeah, and like. Well, the elves just don't flaunt their abs. <laughs> it's true. They've got abs down there. Um, she took her hand back completely and repositioned herself conservatively. Ah! You'll make some woman very happy someday. You could, she could make a bloody cool slow on you. <laughs> the words felt like knives. Because he knew that she wasn't talking about herself. Mirth. She suddenly stood up and forced a smile for him. Ah, thanks for that flower. Oh, this dark time, such thoughts are sorely needed. She walked away, leaving him stranded, but he still felt like he had so much to say. He didn't even get to tell her the line he'd been practicing on the way over, and he was so sure that she hadn't spoken her entire mind either. He sat on the ground for a while longer, staring at the growing flower before him. Did, did he actually show <laughs> romantic interest in a person? Yes. Right. Yeah, no, this is act- definitely him showing romantic interest. All right. Good job... Well, he, he, he's done that with Draco, too. Okay, yeah, yeah. I forgot. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Everything he was feeling and did feel and wanted to feel, it all made sense to him now. He was falling in love with her. No. I like, we're like, we're at three hearts and we're falling in love with Mirth. We're at three hearts and we're still nearly murdering him, Kiki. Yeah, we're at four with Draco. Well, almost four. There's a little sliver out. Oh, there is. <laughs> it's, yeah. no, it's, oh, all of the graphics. It's just a graphic error. Weird. All right, let's talk to Loren. All right. I've noticed that you and the Amazons remain neutral in most of theirs. Oh, that's not true at all. We're not neutral about oppression or feudalism or slavery. We're quite pro-slavery. Um, we're very much anti-everything outside. Yeah, we're, we're isolationist xenophobes. It's um, quite different. Um, we're pro-combat. Mm, mm. Uh, very much into any kind of like duels, war. Uh, did I mention the slavery? Because, um, yes. Uh, yes. I find it interesting. Even when it comes to dark magic, you have no strong thoughts on it. I, as a person, try not to have any strong thoughts. I, I lift heavy things and prefer strong arms to strong thoughts. Dark magic doesn't threaten the Amazons, and we're not afraid of it. Never morals or religions that cast certain magics out are not my concern. And the war between the Empire and the Elves? Double don't care. That also doesn't concern the Amazons. If I may ask, what then might the Amazons care about? Slaves, fucking, and swords. Are you joking? Our own affairs. If something directly affects my people, then I will cast an eye towards it. If it involves slaves, fucking, or swords. So you don't think the world at war affects you at all? No, we live on the moon. Have you been paying attention? Actually, have you been paying attention? We are on a quest because there's actually a thing that affects us. People war with each other all the time. We'll sit it through like we always have. 
friendly, so she doesn't stab us. That's friendly. That's nothing. But people are dying. Don't you care at all? Are they Amazons? Someone must be like you in order for you to care about them. Uh, I'm going to say this very slowly to you, Saren. Including me? Now, the, the short answer to that is yes. The long answer to that is yes. <laughs> Loren's wi eyes widened and she stared at him. That's, that's not what I meant. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm some kind of racist monster who keeps slaves. I'm just saying that your property and I could sell you anytime I wanted. Yes, ma'am. Damn. Well, that was unpleasant. Uh, all right. You know, that's, <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, now time. we're going to take a break. Take a break. And then we'll go to the swamp. All right.